Welcome to worship, everyone. Very glad to have you here. This is our Thursday evening service. It's at 7 o'clock every week, and our Sunday services are at uh, 9 in the morning. But today we're recording early because that's the best time for us to have people to record. I'm Pastor Nelson. I'll be conducting our worship service tonight. Uh, tonight and this weekend, we are celebrating Trinity Sunday. And on Trinity Sunday, we take a closer look at the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and how they work together as a team. Our opening hymn is going to be hymn number 195, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Please stand. This weekend we're following the service of the word in the hymnal for our worshipers at home. That's on page 38. Uh, for our worshipers here, we have a little bit of an abbreviated service because we do not have an organist at our evening services during the summer. But we follow the basic framework. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. 
and also with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. We pray. Almighty God and Father, dwelling in majesty and mystery, filling and renewing all creation by your eternal spirit, and manifesting your saving grace through our Lord Jesus Christ. In mercy, cleanse our hearts and lips that, free from doubt and fear, we may always worship you, one true immortal God, with your Son and the Holy Spirit, living and reigning, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our scripture lessons. Well, as you... I'm looking forward to right after the Old Testament lesson, we have Psalm 150, and that's going to be on page 122. The Old Testament lesson for celebration of Trinity, Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8, and hymn 195 that we just got done singing is based on Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, with two they flew. One called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. The foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of the one who called, and the temple was filled with smoke. Then I said, I am doomed, I am ruined, because I am a man with unclean lips, and I dwell among a people with unclean lips, and because my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of armies. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, carrying a glowing coal in his hand, which he had taken from the altar with tongs. He touched my mouth with the coal and said, Look, this has touched your lips, so your guilt is taken away and your sin is forgiven. Then I heard the Lord's voice saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Then I said, here I am, send me. Here ends our Old Testament lesson. We'll continue now with the responsive reading of Psalm 150. Um, in the red hymnal, it is on page 122. We'll read the refrains together, and then for the verses, we'll take turns reading them. I'll be first, and then at the bottom, glory be to the Father in unison as well. Psalm 150. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with tambourine and dancing. Praise him with strings and flutes. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. 
Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Epistle Lesson for our worship services this weekend is recorded in Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. And here's what Paul writes. Indeed, those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery so that you are afraid again, but you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we call out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself joins our spirit in testifying that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, we are also heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, since we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. Here ends our epistle lesson. The seasonal response is printed out in the bulletin. We'll read that together. Alleluia, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. Alleluia. Please stand for our gospel lesson. The Holy Gospel is recorded in John chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Now a man, <clears throat> now a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council, he came to he came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these miraculous signs unless you are doing unless God is with him. Jesus replied, Amen, amen, I tell you, unless someone is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? He cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born, can he? Jesus answered, Amen, amen, I tell you, unless someone is born of the water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Whatever is born of the flesh is flesh. Whatever is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be surprised when I tell you that you must be born from above. The wind blows where it pleases. You hear its sound, but you do not where it come. You do not know where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. How can these things be? Asked Nicodemus. You are the teacher of Israel, Jesus answered, and you do not know these things. Amen. Amen. I tell you, we speak what we know and we testify about what we have seen. But you people do not accept our testimony. If I told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man who is in heaven. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Here ends our gospel lesson. You may be seated for our next hymn. It is, for God so loved the world, I'm going to get the exact number, and we're going to sing all six stanzas of this hymn. Hymn number 391, God loved the world so that he gave.
391. For God so loved the world that he gave. 391.
please stand? The word of God for our meditation this weekend is our epistle lesson, Romans 8, verses 14 through 17, but I've also added in <clears throat> verse 13. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ if indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. These are God's words for us to look at this weekend. Well, dear Christian friends, as we um, gather together to celebrate the Trinity, we have to realize and understand that when we talk about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, it is not a concept that is something that can mentally be grasped. How can there be three persons and yet only one God? And all three of those persons are also called God. And so to the, to the human mind, there's a lot of contradictions, there's a lot of misunderstanding, there's a lot of wonder of how does this work? Has the Bible always taught that there is a Father, a Son, and a Holy Spirit? And the way that we begin to take a look at the teaching of the Trinity is to understand there is no teaching, no doctrine that is comprehensible by human understanding. None of them. Creation. Seven days. Out of nothing. By God's almighty word. A great flood. Another miracle that took, took place where the world was destroyed and it will never be destroyed in that way again, and promises about a, a coming Savior who would be God's Son, but born of a human being. I mean, all of these teachings, salvation and justification and sanctification, all of the big words that are there, none of them are mentally comprehensible. All of them are teachings that require faith, require trust. And you and I as Christians, we know that the reason we can have faith and trust in these teachings goes right back to God's word in the Bible. The Bible teaches these teachings. The Bible speaks about these teachings. The Bible shares for us these teachings to make it clear that even though we can't totally, completely, or even barely understand them, they're taught. And if God said it, we trust and believe, we have faith that that's the message that God wanted to get across to each and every one of us. Forgiveness of sins. As Christians, we know how we get the forgiveness of sins. It, it's not by our works, which would be the natural way that people would look at it in this world. They think, you know, there's a cause and an effect. If I do this, then I either deserve this bad thing or I deserve a good thing. But that's not how forgiveness works. Forgiveness also is a gift of faith. We've come to learn and to believe and to know and to trust 
God so loved the world, from John chapter 3, verse 16, is the clear and simple truth that the Lord speaks about in the Bible, explains throughout the rest of the Bible, Jesus came to save. God's very own Son came to save and to rescue. And so we trust and believe that. The Trinity, it is taught in the Old Testament. It is taught in Genesis chapter 1. It is taught in Deuteronomy chapter 6. It is taught in Isaiah chapter 6. It is taught in many other Old Testament verses where you will have the three persons of the Trinity who are referred to. And then in the New Testament, Jesus himself makes it totally clear. I want you to go and teach all nations and I want you to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We hear the blessings. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Biblical verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 13. And through those verses, as well as our verse for today in Romans chapter 8, where Paul talks about uh, the three persons of the triune God, we get to see and understand that this is not something that is, you know, just strange and new, and it just, you know, it's a quirk that comes up in the Bible in just a couple pages, but this is a part of the whole weave of the scriptures. Get to know the one true God as he is revealed by the Father, and he gets credit for creation by the Son, and his credit is uh, redemption, and by the Holy Spirit, sanctification. And yet, all three are working together, a very special team. There isn't one that is just off by their own person without the working of the other persons. And so tonight and Sunday for Trinity, we're, we're going to look at togetherness. The togetherness, the unity, the special working together of the triune God. And Paul is going to talk about togetherness in our witness, which means our sharing of God's word, togetherness <clears throat> in our inheritance, togetherness in suffering, and even especially togetherness in glory. When we are brought into God's kingdom, the Holy Spirit lives in us. And we become a part of God's family. And that special presence of the Lord with us is there to help lead us into all truth, to guide us, to help us, and to comfort us. And as we call upon the Lord, we call upon him to make sure that we are ones who are going to be led by the Spirit of God because God wants us to be children of God, sons of God, adopted into God's family. God wants us to know the relationship that he has made with us personally. We were not the ones who chose him. We were not the ones who decided that we tell ourselves, okay, now I'm going to be a part of God's family. No, that didn't work because our sins kept on getting in the way. Because whenever we tried to become a part of God's family, we tried to prove to God that we were good enough. And when that didn't work, we tried to prove to God that we really, really weren't bad enough that we should be excluded. And that didn't work either. But through the work of the Spirit, the Father, and the Son, the Holy Spirit comes into our lives to open our eyes, raise us from the dead, and bring us into his kingdom so that we can see, oh, God, you took care of it because I was not able to. You opened my eyes to be able to see what you did 
because I couldn't do it on my own because it didn't make sense. And the Holy Spirit helps to lead us into truth, guide us into truth, and to work together with us, in us, to make sure that we can witness and share the good news of salvation. In our Old Testament lesson of Isaiah chapter 6, the prophet Isaiah, in a very special event, a special occasion, was pulled into the presence of God in God's holy temple. And in terror and fear, he cried out that he was lost. Not just physically lost, but he was about to die because he knew that he could not stand in God's presence with his unclean lips, with his unclean heart, with all of the sins that he knew were completely in him through and through. And yet the Lord sent that angel to him to cleanse him, to purify him, to remind him that God has a way to make it possible for us to be in the presence of God. And after he witnessed all of these things, the seraphim and the cherubim and hearing the voice of God and the singing and the smoke and the noise, the Lord asked, who will go? And the witness, Isaiah, immediately replied, Here am I. Send me. I, wanna, I want to take on this responsibility. I want to uh, take on this privilege to tell people about the one true God and share with them that one true God's plan of salvation, the promises of the Savior. And he will write many of those prophecies throughout his book of Isaiah. And we have some of the most beautiful prophecies of the coming Savior and the suffering Savior in the words of Isaiah, who writes almost as if he was there and he saw that these things, how they would take place and when they would take place and exactly all the details about it. He wanted to witness. He wanted to share. And Paul wants to remind us that this is a part of what we as Christians continue to do in our lives as well. Testify that we're God's children. Testify, share, make it known that we're part of God's family, that God's adopted us into his family, and that God wants to share that news with this entire world because God so loved the world that he sent Jesus. And we want to share that good news about our Savior Jesus Christ so that many others can be able to enjoy the blessed inheritance that God promises for all of his children, for all believers, for all who trust in Jesus as our Savior. And that inheritance is a very special one. Paul talks about it, that if we're children of God, that makes us heirs. Now, I, I read a lot of uh, different articles that come up on the, the internet about families arguing back and forth about who's going to inherit this, who's going to inherit that. These aren't fair. This person's getting more. That one's not getting enough. That's humanity. And that's the proof of our, our sinful nature that we tend to get greedy. But being God's children, we know that we all get the very same blessings. Forgiveness of sins, life, salvation, eternity with our heavenly Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and all the angels and all the other saints and believers, we get that blessing. Each and every one of us. And there's nothing to be jealous about. There's nothing to be uh, envious of. It's we get the greatest blessings of all because nothing else can compare to them. And since we're heirs, we're heirs of God. We're heirs with Christ. We have everything that the triune God has to give us as a free and total blessing. 
But then Paul goes on to remind us that it's a great thing to know what we have, what we look forward to. But he also wants to tell us, here, here's a part of what comes along with that, that while we're here in this world living in sin and among sinners, not everybody wants to hear that message. Not everyone likes it when we share that message. Not everyone thinks that that's the greatest thing in the world. There are so many that think it's total foolishness and that we're totally foolish for believing in something that cannot be explained. And yet, we gladly believe it because we know God will explain it and he's clearly told us about it already on the pages of scriptures. So one of those things is that as Jesus, who came into this world, suffered and died, Christians will also be going through a part of that as well. Satan will not try, be trying to destroy us as though we are the only ones who can save the world because we're not. The one who already saved the world, Jesus has done his job. And now we just have the opportunity to share it and to keep on sharing it, even though all stops might be pulled out against us, a lot of pressure can be put on us, and this world is going to just keep on getting worse. And as it gets worse, it's going to try our faith. And yet the Lord promises that as our faith is tried, it is also purified. And that he will help us in that. And he will be the one that will lead us to the ultimate, ultimate goal. So that we may be glorified with him. We hold on to these truths and we trust and believe that these are the promises that God has made for us to know about, to help us in our struggle, in our journey, to know that the Lord is also with us during that journey, in that journey, holding us up throughout that journey, and that he'll continue to lead us into life everlasting. Triune God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit working together to bring us to eternal glory. And we thank him that they know exactly what they're doing and how they've accomplished it. Amen. Please stand. You'll turn to page 41 in the front of the hymnal. We will continue with the confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We're going to continue with our prayer of the day because this is Trinity Sunday, I have a special prayer that I want to use. We pray. Try you, God, you are the one eternal God whose name we praise forever. We could not have known you, our only Savior, if you had not revealed yourself to us as Father, Son, and Spirit. Three persons, yet one God. Remove us from all unbelief and grant us humble faith as we contemplate this high and holy mystery. Scatter all those who are wise in their own conceits and give us a simple childlike trust to worship you as Trinity in unity and unity in Trinity. 
God our Father, whatever good is in us, whatever good things we have and whatever good we do comes from you alone. In you we live and move and have our being. Open our eyes to see all of those gifts you shower down on us daily, purely out of your own fatherly love and care. Jesus, our Savior, you came into this world to make the Father known to us. You joined yourself to us by taking on our humanity. You brought us back to God by shedding your blood. In love, you walked the way of suffering and bore alone the wrath of God, the wrath that we, by our sins, deserve. Help us believe that all you did, all you suffered, and all you endured, you did for us, to rescue us, to set us free, to make us your children. In the bright new hope of your resurrection, teach us to offer our lives each and every day in praise to God and in love to our neighbor. Creator Spirit, you've opened our eyes by the bright light of your word. You burst through our deafness with the clear sound of your voice in the scriptures. You breathed into us new life by the power of the gospel. Through the word and your sacraments, help us to grow in understanding the breadth and depth and the height of the love of God. Make us firm in our resolve to do battle with all of our sin. In every weakness, be our strength so that we may show ourselves to be God's true children, faithful in prayer, constant in hope, and fervent in love. O trying God, you are the God of glory, the God of grace, and the God of every comfort. From you and through you and to you are all things. We rejoice to call you Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and to praise your holy name forever. And now we join in the prayer that Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, we thank you for this day of grace now drawing to a close. Stay with us. Warm our hearts with your forgiving love in Christ. May your word keep our faith burning brightly that we can walk in the light of your presence through the darkness of this world. Come and bless us in our worship and in our lives. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn. It is going to be hymn number 452, verses 1 and 2. Let us ever walk with Jesus. <laughs> 